Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a continuation of my series where I analyse the 2016 Broadway revival of Falsettos, which you can probably tell because the jumper is out. I'm gonna have a real trouble when I start wanting to wear this jumper when this series is done and you think I have more to say and I don't. We'll come to that when we come to it. Today we are going to be exploring the way the play explores masculinity and femininity through metaphor and symbolism. I'm very very excited. If you haven't seen the other parts of this series we so far have had a look at the set design and the costume. Those videos are in a playlist in my channel and it would mean the world to me if you would check those ones out too and let me know what you think. Just quickly before I start I again just want to apologise if you catch me looking down. I've got my blog post that I've written about this too because they go up at the same time and I want to make sure that they're as similar as they can be and it'll be here that I'm likely to miss something out if I don't keep myself right. So I've just got that there to make sure I don't miss out like a really important piece of information. So we're just going to get straight into it. We're going to have a look at masculinity first and then we'll do femininity second. This mainly is because I feel like the masculinity metaphor is explored in a bit more detail or at least I realised the detail more for this one so this is where we're starting. In Fossettos I believe that chess is used as a metaphor for masculinity. In Act 1 it's very clear that Trina, Jason and Marvin's idea of what it means to be a gay man is very skewed by societal homophobia and oppression and they all seem to believe that being gay inherently compromises a person's masculinity or I guess if we want to be fancy, they believe that it's inherently emasculating, like using big words. Additionally, Jason really sees being gay as a bad thing in Act 1, which I think has a lot to do with the fact that his first exposure to queer people and queer relationships is Marvin and Wizards, which not only was the relationship that broke up his family but also they've not got a particularly healthy one and it's definitely not an ideal first representation of any sort of relationship for a young kid and he really internalizes that and how bad he thinks it is to be gay and because of this we see a lot in act one jason really trying to overcompensate on his masculinity or what he perceives to be masculine to try and avoid ending up gay like his dad and the way he does this more often than not is to sit and play chess by himself i think it's also sort of hinted at and then explored a little bit later on in the act that this is the only bonding point that marvin and jason have pre the split between Marvin and Trina and it's the sort of main link he has to his father before before he was gay so he's really compensating he's sticking to it he's determined by any means possible that he will not turn out like his father and so he plays a lot of chess by himself I think this is one of the first ways we see chess being really used as a metaphor for masculinity and I think it's one of the most obvious ones that you pick up on first and it's very entertaining because it's chess. We see the metaphor used again heavily in the chess game. This is when Marvin makes Wizard play chess with him despite it being glaringly obvious that Wizard does not want to play chess, that Wizard does not know how to play chess and has no interest in learning. But this is again because Marvin views chess as this masculine hobby and he's not playing it to try and make Wizard be more masculine. In fact Marvin's idea of what a relationship is and what a relationship should be is so tainted by this like nuclear family idea that he is still trying to assume the role of this like straight husband who goes off to work while his wife stays at home and cooks and cleans and he really pushes this like feminine housewife role on to wizard because that's what he thinks a relationship has to be he doesn't think that they can be like equals i guess and also equally men so he's really whether consciously or not pushing this feminine role onto wizard which we'll get into a little bit more later but he's definitely i think making wizard play chess with him because he knows wizard doesn't know how to play and it makes him feel more powerful and more masculine it's his way of like asserting his dominance or whatever like above wizard because he can win at it and it makes him feel like a man because he's good at chess and he's winning chess and that's why things go so poorly when wizard doesn't stick to the script in the song wizard says let me win and marvin says okay and then wizard does 
but not the way Marvin expected it to go. I think that when Wizard says let me win, Marvin is expecting a full game to continue on but like he's just gonna go easy on Wizard and then Wizard will win but instead Wizard goes do you know what screw this. I don't know how to play this game, I don't understand the rules so I'm not gonna stick to them, I'm just gonna like and then I'm gonna win and there's nothing you can do about it and it majorly because he's been challenged and not tearing down Marvin's masculinity but he's he's not letting Marvin have this control over him anymore and Marvin really doesn't like that because Wizard hasn't been like oh let me win and then let Marvin let him win which would let Marvin remain in power he's still in control he's still dominating the situation Wizard has been like well no screw it and, and he's just went for it and Marvin's not in control anymore he's no longer in a position where he's like winning over and having this like advantage over his like poor feminine lover and he doesn't like it and obviously then they they break up but i really think that this this use of chess to exercise his dominance is his way of overcompensating for the fact that he thinks that his identity as a gay man emasculates him so he is clinging to the things that he was interested in and that he before he realized he was gay and also that other straight men or that society has told him are masculine hobbies uh, and winning chess against wizard helps him to cling on to this idea of masculinity that he's so desperate to cling on to whilst also pushing wizard into this feminine housewife box that he really needs wizard to stay in so that he doesn't have to confront his identity and his bias and the fact that Maybe what he's been taught is wrong and maybe what he's been taught is not only harming him but also harming the people around him. So I think this is again an another point in the chess game is after the let me win situation Marvin kicks Wizard out, they break up and Wizard starts to list all of the feminine roles and tasks that have been pushed onto him that he wanted nothing to do with in the first place. I'm going to read them to you now, I'm going to read the quote. Wizard's supposed to make the dinner, be a patsy, lose at chess, always bravely acquiesce clip the coupons make the dinner and love him and so we're getting to see a sort of deeper explanation of Marvin's attempt to like really stick their relationship into this heteronormative box that it doesn't fit in but that allows Marvin to be comfortable and not have to face the obvious turmoil that's going on inside of him but there is a uh, emphasis made in these lines about the be a patsy, lose at chess, always bravely acquiesce. Like the fact that the losing at chess thing is mentioned in those lines amongst the other traditionally feminine things, I think just further highlights that chess is very much seen as a masculine skill or hobby in their house and that part and parcel of him becoming this like submissive housewife role was to let Marvin beat him at chess to continue to be crap at it but continue to play it even if he doesn't want to because it gives Marvin a position to dominate and keep his masculinity intact. We see at other points in the show Marvin is called a queen specifically by Trina which is a feminine term this is also a term that is used against gay men like in a derogatory way to imply that their queerness makes them inherently feminine and I think that other people calling Marvin a queen sort of is showing us his inner insecurities being echoed to him. I mean it shows the other characters lack of understanding of what it means to be gay and, and how affected they are by societal homophobia but I think also it makes it very interesting because Marvin is absolutely dead set on other people viewing him as a king which is often explored by him referring to himself or hinting at his kinship with the chess piece the king which we see in the chess game i think this is him again trying to cling on to his masculinity and i think this is sort of further proven because he starts calling wizard the queen chess piece or referring to or comparing wizard to the queen chess piece which is a him again being like well I'm a man and that means you have to be the woman which obviously isn't true but is definitely where his head is at in act one. At the end of Fossetto Land the reprise at the very end when 
the show's over, Jason puts a chess piece on top of wizard's headstone. Now this is interesting both in this context of masculinity which I'll get into in a minute but also the sort of social context that this brings in. There is a tradition in Judaism which I think takes place a year after someone passes away where their loved one put stones or a stone on their headstone or gravestone whatever it is that they're called and I think that this chess piece thing was like a nod to that and that their characters culture and religion which i found really interesting i didn't realize it was a thing and i seen somebody mention it so this that point there about the headstone thing is definitely not my own but it is very interesting and i definitely thought that when i was talking about this moment i did have to mention it but it's also very interesting again through this lens of their struggle with masculinity and femininity because i think the piece that he puts on Wizard's headstone is the king and I think this is sort of like the final consolidation of the fact that Wizard was a man and he was a good man and he had the qualities that made him a man. His masculinity and his, his identity is questioned a lot throughout the show and I just think it was such a sweet way for it to end for this sort of piece that we've sort we've constantly see be linked to masculinity and manliness be the piece that he's awarded and it's as if this debate and this argument about wizard's role and his gender expression or whatever is settled and they're saying you are a man and you are a good man and you possess the ideals and the qualities or whatever it is that we think or that just point blank does make a man does a man make okay so next up we are going to have a look at femininity i don't quite have as much to say about this but i have some points that i think are quite interesting so we're going to have a look at it where masculinity is explored through the metaphor of chess I think that femininity is explored through the metaphor of cooking. As we've already sort of discussed throughout Act 1, Marvin really is pushing this housewife role onto Wizard and the key way this is done out with chess is him forcing Wizard to make their meals. And it's quite clear he's not very good at it. He has no interest in doing it and he, he doesn't always do it when he should because he doesn't care. But Marvin is insistent that he cooks the meals because that's a job that he associates with being like his wife's job or a wife's job and this role of like the wife and the housewife is the role that he's so desperate for Wizard to assume so that he does not have to confront the reality of the fact that they're not a straight couple. They cannot function in this heteronormative relationship because it's unhealthy for straight couples and it's definitely unhealthy for gay couples and he is not ready to confront that yet at all so it causes this problem that is very often shown through him forcing wizard to cook and it causes a lot of arguments because wizard doesn't want to do it and he doesn't understand why he has to do it or why marvin is so angry when he doesn't do it because he's not a woman and he doesn't want to be a woman and he doesn't want to be viewed as a woman he is a man and wizard is comfortable in his own masculinity enough to be like this is stupid but he marvin's scary and he's aggressive and wizard sort of ends up having to go along with it anyway I'll albeit with some resistance but I definitely think this is like the big parallel that shows the contrast in masculinity chess and femininity cooking because then Trina in this had better come to a stop wizard makes a point about the fact that he doesn't want to cook and that Marvin is making him do it and Trina joins in and she explains to Mendel that Marvin made her cook and she was expected to feed him every night whether she wanted to or not because that's what a housewife should do so her saying I think kind of solidifies the idea that this is definitely like a feminization thing that that Marvin is trying to put wizard in this box that he'd put Trina in so that he could keep this really toxic masculinity that he is afraid to challenge or let go of or confront the toxicity of. I think that this metaphor is explored again to a slightly lesser extent within Charlotte and Cordelia's relationship. In Something Bad is Happening, Charlotte explains that she's sort of viewed as less feminine because of her job and her attitude. In contrast, 
Cordelia seems like the uber hyper femme woman. She's a caterer and I think that her job as a caterer enhances that perspective from the audience that she is a very feminine woman and creates this contrast between Charlotte who has assumed this job that was more often than not a man's job or perceived to be a man's job and when she's explaining the struggles that she faces because of that and the misogyny and sort of attitude that she gets from her peers being a woman in a male profession we then see Cordelia who presents very femininely and is also a, a, she's a cook for a job but what I also find quite interesting is she's not a very good cook we see some struggle with people eating her food. And I think to me, that's a slight hint that um, their relationship does not fit a heteronormative role. They're not trying to assume this like nuclear family job because Charlotte is still very much a woman and has this connection to her womanhood and her femininity that we see she's not like a very masculine, masculine woman. And she has no interest in, in being perceived as manly. It is just how other people do perceive her because of her job and then I think with Cordelia she is very feminine and she is a caterer but she's not a very good one and she's not sure that it is the job for her and whether or not she wants to reach out or whether or not she enjoys it. I think that's really interesting because there's a similar thing happening with them as characters as we see explored through Marvin and Wizard but it's much healthier and you can tell it's not this like forced this is the woman and this is the man because they are both women and there is just these little bits of nuance that go into their characters that make this femininity metaphor much less harsh or uncomfortable because it's actually just like yeah i'm a feminine woman woo which i find really nice because you know the lesbians from next door are legends and they've got a very lovely relationship and it's nice to see the little moments that you can catch that show this. Okay so that is all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something. I hope you find it interesting. If you've watched this video first and you've decided that you do in fact want to explore the rest of the playlist. As I said before there is a playlist for the rest of the series on my channel but it would mean a lot to me if you checked out. If you enjoyed today's video in general and you'd like to see more from me absolutely feel free to subscribe, turn post notifications on, leave a comment to let me know you enjoyed it or a comment to let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see from me in the future. I hope that you have a lovely week and I will see you next time.